two, one, lift off. This is the scabbard from General Kosciuszko. It fell off the horse some time ago, and we've been holding on to it in anticipation of this day when we were going to uh, turn it over to the conservators and they were going to take the monument away and, and repair it and restore it. This town is significant for art conservation because it was the first professional center providing conservation services to museums. Sculpture conservation is a, is a very active area in conservation, has been for uh, decades. In the 1930s, the profession changed, it actually became a profession. Before that, we were called restorers. Uh, typically, the work was done in a secretive manner. So this is the foundry mark um, with the location, the name of the foundry, and the date. And on this side, you will see the uh, signature of the sculptor. These were cast in large pieces. This man was cast in one piece, except for his arm from about here out. But the rest of them was all cast in one big casting. And the same thing with the horse. It was cast almost complete in itself. Typically, they never recast a piece. If it's got a flaw, they'll fix it. They've got lots of ways to fix it. And one of the interesting things is, is if you look inside the figure or inside the horse, you'll see the inside's pretty rough. It's got lots of bumps, blemishes. The outside used to be just like that. When it came out of the mold, it had lots of little flaws on the surface, which they completely finished by hand. Lots of little round circles, one after the next. And each one of those circle is a place where they drilled, tapped, screwed in a plug, finished it off smooth on the outside, drilled right next to it, put it in another plug, and just kept going. And I've seen plugs, maybe 50, 60 plugs in a length about this long, where they, where they close one of those type of cracks in casting. Uh, height is, uh, he's probably a good 20 feet tall. Um, Weight-wise, he was quite a bit heavier when we got him because he was full of uh, investment material and foreign matter on the inside. And because these castings are not watertight, they have lots of little flaws all over the surface, and water and moisture and rain get inside. So if there's core material inside, like an arm, and moisture gets in there and saturates it, in the wintertime, when it freezes, it'll expand and crack the casting. And we can see there's a number of places where that happened on this artwork. This is where the damage was. So this area was split open. Uh, this area was split open here. What we did when we were cleaning the sculpture out is we would remove patches like that to allow us access to the interior of the sculpture. Uh, get a pressure washer up in there, uh, clean out the interior until it's absolutely empty and free, um, and then put those patches back into place. The only item that was missing were his spurs had been broken off and lost over time. Well, we had a, we had a stub about this, this long coming out of, uh, out of the back here. So that kind of told me what the scale of the spur was and the size of it. Um, and then keeping it in proportion, uh, fabricated the length and then, and then attached the spur by welding. Another problem we found was the casting porosity at the top of the hat. So we had to fill that to keep rain and debris and whatnot from collecting in that and also to keep the water out of the internal part of the sculpture. In the case of General Kajuko, it had a beautiful green patina. It's a patina that people enjoy. Unfortunately, we can't always keep that patina because the invasive, uh, the, when the work is invasive, that is, if you have to cut into the metal, for example, to make a repair, which we had to do for this monument, you can't put back that green. So you have to start the uh, patina process all over again. We typically take it back to what the bronze looked like originally, and most of them were a color called statuary brown. 
It's a process, it's a hot process done with a torch and chemicals, uh, in this case ferric nitrate and some liver of sulfur. Uh, they react with the bronze and cause the bronze surface to appear to change color. Uh, it's a kind of an artistic endeavor because you want to kind of darken some areas and keep other areas light so it doesn't look like a coat of paint. You can tell that he's a consummate quality sculptor. You know that he captured a great uh, bold pose that doesn't look static at all. It's wonderful. He's added quite a bit of detail. Uh, there's stitching marks even on the, on the reins if you get close. The buckles are fantastic. Look at his, at his uniform, his uniform. Yeah. It's just, you want to touch it. It's so done well, so well, the texture the of it. The whole element looks like it has life. You can see the life in the horse with the veins sticking out. It's sculpted so it looks like it's in motion and that's nice, it's not just flat and static. Humans need constant visual reminders of things. If those weren't there, we would go through our daily lives and not think about the people of the past, the accomplishments of the past. It's like meeting people that you, you can't meet now, but people that you might have, might have liked to have known. Uh, so uh, this constant visual reminders is pretty important for humans.